Hello, friends. My name is Anna. Today, I want to tell you an interesting story about a snow princess. Let's listen together. Frozen, the junior novelization by Disney Book Group. Prologue. Long ago, atop a mountain high above the kingdom of Arendelle, a group of strong men were hard at work. They were ice harvesters, men who cut and hauled huge blocks of ice from the mountain lakes. Horses stood at attention, waiting with empty wagons to be filled. The ice blocks were hoisted into the wagons. Soon they would be taken down to the village to sell. It was a dangerous business. One slip could send a block hurtling down the mountainside, or even worse, falling on a man and crushing him. A boy stood in the shadows watching the workmen. He kept a small sled at his side. His name was Kristoff, and he desperately wanted to join the ice harvesters, but he was too young. Standing next to him was his friend Sven, a baby reindeer. Kristoff imagined the two of them taking a sled full of ice blocks into the village of Arendelle. Sven sniffed the cold air and glanced at the big blocks of ice. They looked very heavy. He snorted but didn't move a hoof. As evening approached, Kristoff finally convinced Sven to carry a small load of ice on their sled. By now, the men had lit several lanterns and were finishing loading their own wagons. Kristoff crept forward and was able to grab a small block of ice. He finally wrestled the block onto his sled and attached Sven's harness. Wagon by wagon, the ice harvesters headed down the mountain roads. Kristoff trailed behind with Sven, steering his own small wagon down the bumpy path. Above them all, the northern lights spread across the dark sky, creating waves of gossamer green light. The magical glow pulsed as it rolled over the mountains, down toward the kingdom below. Chapter 1 In a grassy valley next to a deep fjord, the castle of Arendelle lay silent in the night. The bright luster of the northern lights danced across the windows, waking a small girl. She sat up and grinned to see the wonderful green light. The girl jumped out of bed and tiptoed across the room to wake her older sister. Elsa, Elsa, she said urgently. Wake up. Elsa, who was eight years old, grumbled and ducked under the covers. Anna, go back to sleep. But Anna wouldn't give up. I just can't. The sky's awake, so I'm awake, and so we have to play, she said. Do you want to build a snowman? Elsa's eyes popped open. That got her attention. The girls were the daughters of Arendelle's king and queen and the best of friends. Elsa couldn't resist Anna's begging. The sisters ran down the hallway in their nightgowns, laughing as they hurried along. Entering the great hall, where all the royal balls were held, they turned to each other. Are you ready? Elsa asked, smiling. Yes, yes. Anna cried, reaching out to tickle her sister. Elsa giggled, and suddenly, snowflakes seemed to burst in a flurry from her hands. Anna clapped happily. She knew that her sister had a very special talent. She could create snow and ice, even in the middle of summer. With a twirl and a wave of her hands, Elsa magically summoned her icy powers. Quickly, she filled the great hall with mounds of fluffy snow, turning it into a winter playground. Then she stomped her feet and ice swept across the floor. She laughed to see little Anna hopping around joyfully. Together, they went to work building their snowman. Anna did her best to roll out the snowman's body. Then she ran to get a carrot for the nose. Snowman, she exclaimed proudly. Elsa laughed at the lopsided snowman. Hi, I'm Olaf, she said in a deep voice, pretending to be the snowman. And I like warm hugs. The girls danced around their funny snowman. 
Then Elsa gathered her icy magic and made a swooping ice slide. Anna squealed with delight. She climbed to the top of the slide, then zoomed down and soared up again along the icy curve. Elsa quickly created another slide to catch Anna as she came down. The little girl gained speed and was tossed upward again. Elsa had to work fast to keep pace with Anna. She kept making more slides so her sister could stay aloft as she flew around the room. Anna, slow down, Elsa said, starting to get worried. It's too high. But Anna was having fun. The little princess was fearless, jumping and sliding to each new slide as quickly as Elsa made it. Elsa raised her hand to create the next slide, but suddenly, her foot slipped. As she stumbled, her magic went awry. Her frozen blast caught the side of Anna's head right through her curls. Anna gasped and fell to the ground, unconscious. Anna! Elsa shouted, running to her sister. She lifted Anna up and felt her cold, shivering body. A lock of Anna's hair had turned pure white where the magic had hit it. Mama! Papa! Elsa cried desperately. As she called for help and her worry increased, icicles formed on the ceiling and frozen spikes grew tall around the girls. The king and queen burst into the great hall to find their daughters huddled in a frozen landscape. They knew that Elsa had a special ability to create ice, but this was more than they'd ever seen. Elsa, the king cried. This is getting out of hand. I'm sorry, Elsa replied in distress. I didn't mean it. Anna, the queen gasped and ran toward her little girl. Chapter 2 The castle's library was dark, but the king knew what he was looking for, an ancient book filled with knowledge from centuries past. When he found it, he pulled it from the shelf and quickly flipped through the pages to the section he needed. In it was a drawing of a troll, which seemed to be holding the northern lights in its hands. In front of the troll, a wounded human lay quiet while the troll used the magic of the northern lights to heal him. The king turned the page and spotted a crumbling document tucked into the book. He carefully unfolded the yellowed map. Wasting no time, the king and queen threw on their cloaks, bundled up their daughters, and ordered that the horses be saddled. The royal family hurried away from the castle. The queen traveled on her own horse with Elsa while the king held Anna in his arms. The horses thundered up the mountain path. Kristoff and Sven were walking down the rocky mountain path under the bright glow of the northern lights. But as the rumble of hoofs filled the air, they moved aside, wary of the approaching horses. They watched the riders gallop past, leaving a trail of ice behind them. Curious, Kristoff and Sven followed the travelers to a ridge above a mountain valley. The two hid behind a rock and watched as the horses whinnied and came to a stop. The king and queen dismounted. The king held a young girl to his shoulder. The queen held the hand of a slightly older girl. Please, help, the king cried out. My daughter. The hillside appeared empty at first. Then a pile of rocks rolled down the hillside. Suddenly, the rocks unfolded themselves into legs and arms and stood up, revealing themselves to be small gray creatures. They weren't rocks at all. Trolls, Kristoff whispered to Sven. At that moment, a rock next to Kristoff jumped up, turning into a short troll woman covered with moss. Her name was Hulda. Shush, Hulda told Kristoff absently. I'm trying to listen. Then, startled, Hulda looked more closely at Kristoff, realizing for the first time that he was not a troll. Her face broke into a grin, and she reached out to give Kristoff and Sven big hugs. Cuties, she said, laughing. In the valley, 
The king stood with his daughters as Pabby, a very old troll, made his way through the crowd to gaze at the princesses. First he looked at Elsa. Was she born with the powers or cursed? he asked. Born, the king answered. And they're getting stronger. The troll then turned his attention to Anna, who was still unconscious. You are lucky it wasn't her heart that was struck, he noted. The heart is not so easily changed, but the head can be persuaded. He paused. We should remove all the magic, even memories of magic, to be safe. The king nodded. Do what you must, he said. With a gentle touch of his fingers, the troll pulled a series of glowing memories from little Anna's head. The memories hovered in the air as the troll transformed them into more sensible scenes. Instead of a magical snowman in the ballroom, Anna would now remember a winter scene in the courtyard. Instead of snowflakes in the hallway, she would remember snowflakes falling outside the window. All the magical moments she had shared with Elsa were gone, replaced with normal moments. The only remnant of her magical accident was the streak of white in her hair. There, said Pabby when he was finished. She will remember the fun, but not the magic. She won't remember that I have powers? Elsa asked. No, Pabby said. It's for the best, the king told her. Listen to me, Elsa, Pabby said. Your power will only grow. There is beauty in it, but also great danger. As he spoke, the troll conjured up an image of an older Elsa in the sky. The image twirled gracefully, surrounded by beautiful snowflakes. Then, amid the northern lights, the snowflakes turned into sharp spikes. The specter of a crowd joined Elsa in the sky. The people used the icy spikes as weapons, attacking Elsa's glowing effigy. You must learn to control your power, Pabby continued. Fear will be your enemy. The king hugged Elsa close. We'll protect her, he promised. We'll lock the gates. We'll reduce the staff and keep her powers hidden from everyone, including Anna. Chapter 3 Back at the castle, the king and queen immediately ordered that the castle gates be locked. All the doors were closed and the windows shuttered. They kept the girls secluded and no longer opened the castle to visitors. The family stayed hidden, tucked away inside their walled kingdom. The king and queen acted just as cautiously inside the castle. As the princesses grew, their parents did everything they could to ensure that Elsa learned to control herself. That meant the girls were hardly ever together. Nor did Elsa seek Anna out, since she was afraid she might accidentally hurt her. Day after day, Elsa spent most of her time training to be the next ruler and learning to keep her powers in check. The training was difficult, and Elsa often felt unable to contain her magic. Ice seemed to form on her fingertips whenever she laughed or cried or became upset. Worried, the king gave Elsa a pair of leather gloves. He advised her to keep them on at all times, and reminded her that she had to hide her icy magic in order to stay safe. Conceal it, he told her. Don't feel it, she answered. Don't let it show, he agreed. The years slipped by. Anna spent most of her time alone. Sometimes she played with her dolls, sometimes she pretended to have conversations with painted portraits in the gallery. But she was lonely. Time after time, she knocked on Elsa's door, pleading with her sister to come out and play. But Elsa never did. The memory of their friendship was slowly fading. One day, Anna peered out her window and saw snow falling in the royal gardens. She raced down the hallway to her sister's room. Do you want to build a snowman? She called through the closed door. There was no reply from inside. 
The door did not open. Eventually, Anna went out into the courtyard and tried to build a snowman by herself. After rolling out a lopsided ball, she glanced up at Elsa's window and thought she saw someone smiling down at her. But when she looked again, the face was gone. Without any memory of Elsa's magic, Anna had no idea why she was always alone. Over time, she simply came to accept that her sister's coldness was part of who she was. She didn't know that Elsa was lonely too, and that she missed Anna as much as Anna missed her. Elsa longed to play with Anna but was fearful of the harm her magic might cause by mistake. I'm scared, Elsa told her father one day. It's getting stronger. Getting upset only makes it worse, cautioned the king. Calm down. He reached out to give Elsa a hug. No, she said sharply. Don't touch me. One day years later, when the girls were teenagers, the king and queen boarded a ship, intending to visit another kingdom. They hugged their daughters goodbye and left them at home, as they had many times before. But this time, the king and queen never returned. A storm engulfed the ship, and they were lost at sea. The kingdom mourned their rulers. Inside the castle, Anna felt overcome with grief. Not knowing where else to turn, she knocked again on Elsa's door. Elsa, are you okay? I'm right out here, Anna said. But as always, there was no reply. She slid down and sadly rested her head against the door. It's just you and me now. What are we going to do? Inside her room, Elsa felt awful, too. But she could not open the door. Instead, she sat with her back against the closed door, crying silently. All around her, ice and snow filled the room. In time, the girls became young ladies. But they had grown apart, and Anna felt she barely knew Elsa anymore. When Elsa turned 21, it was time for her to be crowned the new Queen of Arendelle. The whole kingdom was bustling with excitement. For the first time in ages, and for one day only, the castle gates would be open to the village and to all the surrounding kingdoms. It would be a celebration that Arendelle would never forget. Chapter 4 On the morning of Elsa's coronation, the heavy gates to the castle were finally opened. All of Arendelle wanted to celebrate the grand occasion. The streets in front of the castle were crowded with townspeople eager to see the new queen. To add to the excitement, the fjord was filled with ships from other kingdoms, bringing dignitaries from far away. One by one, Important people stepped onto Arendelle's docks. Welcome to our humble Arendelle, the royal handler called to the visitors. One of the visiting dignitaries was the Duke of Weselton, a small man with white whiskers. Two huge guards followed close behind him, carrying his luggage. Ah, Arendelle, our most mysterious trade partner, the Duke said breezily. Open those gates so I may unlock your secrets and exploit your riches. In the distance, Kristoff was making his way down a mountain path. Now grown up and strong, he and Sven had become true ice harvesters, masters at hauling ice blocks down the mountain. To Kristoff, the coronation was a perfect opportunity to sell ice to the crowds who filled Arendelle. A coronation on a hot July day, you know what that means? He asked Sven, who was harnessed to their rickety ice cart. The reindeer raised his eyebrows. Sven couldn't talk, but that wasn't a problem for Kristoff. He often spoke for Sven, changing his voice to sound deeper and more reindeer wide. I sure do, Kristoff, he declared, as Sven. By noon I'm going to smell like a barrel of rabbit skunks. Yes, you will, Kristoff said, talking normally again. He grinned. But also, people will be needing ice. 
Lots of ice. He pulled Sven's rope, and the two continued down into the town. For Anna, the new people and the excitement were a dream come true. For the first time in years, every door in Arendelle was open. No one was shutting her out. She burst through the busy courtyard in front of the castle and practically skipped into town. People everywhere were getting ready for the coronation. She saw banners, a maypole, and flowers, all celebrating her sister, the new queen. There were dancing groups, musical bands, and food stalls. Everything looked so interesting. I can't wait to meet everyone. Anna exclaimed out loud. Then she stopped short as a thought occurred to her. What if I meet the one? Anna knew she wasn't likely to meet someone special, especially since the castle gates would be open for one day only, exactly 24 hours. Still, she couldn't help daydreaming just a bit. Today might be her only chance to meet new friends, have new experiences, and maybe, just maybe, find love. In her room upstairs in the castle, Elsa did not share the happiness that pulsed through the kingdom. She worried about controlling her powers and hoped she could just get through the ceremony without anyone learning about her magic. As a test, she slipped off her gloves and picked up a candlestick and a little jar from the table. She concentrated, holding both with her bare hands. Be the good girl, Elsa whispered to herself. Make one wrong move and everyone will know. She was nervous. As she stood there, ice formed on her palms and moved on to the objects, turning them to ice. She hurriedly dropped them and tucked her gloves back on, concealing her hands and her icy magic. It's only for today, Elsa reminded herself. After that, the gates would be closed again and she could go back into hiding. Chapter 5 In the streets below, Anna was strolling dreamily around the harbor, watching the ships and imagining all the fun the coronation party would bring. For once, it wouldn't matter that Elsa didn't want to spend time with her, because she'd be spending time with everyone else. Anna rounded a corner and suddenly, smack, a horse bumped into her. Caught by surprise, Anna lost her balance and stumbled, falling into a small rowboat on the dock. The boat tipped precariously toward the water. Luckily, the horse came forward and placed its hoof on the end of the boat to keep it from sliding into the harbor. Hey! Anna exclaimed in surprise, looking up at the horse and its rider. I'm so sorry, the rider said. Are you hurt? Anna tried to regain her composure. Hey, uh, no, I'm okay, she managed to say. She couldn't help noticing that the rider was very handsome. Are you sure? The young man asked. He hopped off his horse. He was tall and sharply dressed in a fancy uniform. He looked very concerned about her welfare. Yeah, I just wasn't looking where I was going. Anna said. She smiled. But I'm great, actually. Oh, thank goodness, the stranger said, smiling. He stepped into the little boat and extended his hand to Anna. When their eyes met, a happy charge of excitement passed between them. The young man smiled. Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, he said, introducing himself. Anna stood up and curtsied. Princess Anna of Arendelle, she replied. Princess, he responded, horrified. My lady. He dropped to one knee and bowed his head. His horse also dropped to one knee. Immediately, the little boat tipped backward and Hans tumbled on top of Anna. They both giggled awkwardly. Hi again, Anna said. The prince's face was just inches from hers. Apparently realizing his mistake, the horse slammed its hoof back down on the boat. Anna and Hans fell the opposite way. 
This time, Anna landed on top of Hans. Oh, boy, Hans said, embarrassed. Ha! This is awkward, Anna said, acknowledging their positions. Not that you're awkward, she said, trying to cover her embarrassment. But just because we're, I'm awkward, she said. You're gorgeous. Her hand flew to her mouth. Had she just said that out loud? Wait, what? Hans jumped to his feet, quickly regaining a royal posture. I'd like to formally apologize for hitting the Princess of Arendelle with my horse. And for every moment after, he added. No, no, Anna said. It's fine. I'm not that princess. I mean, if you'd hit my sister, Elsa, this would be... She paused for a moment. Yeesh. Because, you know. Anna patted the horse, trying to recover her rambling thoughts. Hello, she said to the horse. She turned back to Hans and offered him a princess grin. But lucky for you, it's just me. Just you? Hans asked. A warm smile spread across his face. Anna couldn't help smiling back. All of a sudden, the castle bells began to peal. The bells, she cried. The coronation, I'd better go, she said. She hopped off the boat onto the pier and waved. Ah, uh, bye. Hans waved back. Even the horse waved, lifting his hoof off the boat for a moment. Unfortunately, that caused the boat's weight to shift again. Oh, no, Hans said. The boat flipped off the dock and Hans fell into the water with a splash. Lifting the boat off his head, Hans peeked up from the water and watched Anna run through the streets toward the castle. He grinned as he thought about his wonderful chance meeting with the beautiful princess. Soon the people of Arendelle, along with dignitaries from around the land, were making their way into the royal church for Elsa's coronation. Kristoff, however, was far away, in a corner of the town. He had sold all his ice and was now busy bargaining for a brand new sled. Watch this, Sven, Kristoff called as he played around with the sled's special features, which allowed it to switch between runners and wheels. It's a sled. It's a wagon. It's a sled. It's a wagon. The sled salesman looked concerned, as if he was wondering what kind of person would talk to a reindeer. But he wanted to finish the sale. He tried to make small talk as they completed their deal. You sticking around to see the queen and the princess? He asked Kristoff. Are you kidding? Kristoff replied. I've got a brand new sled, with wheels. He grinned. I'm hitting the road. Suit yourself, the man said. But I bet they're beautiful. Kristoff didn't even hear the man. He and Sven were already headed back to the mountains with their new sled. Chapter 6 The cathedral was packed with people as the coronation ceremony began. An orchestra played and a choir sang while the royal procession walked down the very long center aisle. The bishop led the way, followed by Elsa, looking regal and serious, and finally Anna, holding the train of Elsa's dress. At the altar, Elsa and Anna faced the bishop. Near him lay a silver platter holding the royal crown, scepter, and orb. Peeking over her shoulder, Anna spotted the handsome Prince Hans. He sat straight and tall, and a stranger was asleep on his shoulder. Hans waved at Anna, who giggled. The bishop placed the crown on Elsa's head. Then he turned for the scepter and orb and presented them to Elsa. She reached for the royal items, but the bishop cleared his throat. Ahem. Your gloves... Your Majesty. Elsa took a sharp breath. If she took the gloves off, she might accidentally let out her icy magic. 
She hesitated, growing pale with worry. Anna took that moment to look over at Hans and smile at him. She couldn't wait to talk to him at the ball. Elsa slowly removed her gloves and placed them on the satin pillow. With a deep breath, she took the orb and scepter into her hands. She turned to face the crowd. As the undoubted queen, protector of this dominion, the bishop intoned, keeper of the doctrine and government thereof from this day forward, I present to you Her Majesty. Elsa's eyes widened as the scepter and orb began to freeze in her hands. She tried desperately to control her emotions. She was just so nervous. Queen Elsa of Arendelle. The bishop finished his decree. The people in the church rose. Queen Elsa of Arendelle, they echoed. Elsa quickly placed the orb and scepter back on the silver tray and grabbed her gloves. With a sigh of relief, she realized that no one had seen the ice on the orb or the scepter. She smiled at the cheering crowd. She had made it through the ceremony. Later, at the coronation ball, Elsa and Anna stood side by side in a long receiving line at the entrance to the Great Hall. Elsa felt relaxed, almost content, now that the most difficult part of coronation day was over. Festive music filled the air as guests danced across the floor of the lavishly decorated ballroom. You look beautiful, Elsa said to Anna. Thank you, Anna said in surprise. A smile spread across her face. Her sister had actually spoken to her. You look beautifuler, Anna replied. Then she realized how strange that had sounded and blurted out an explanation. Not that you're fuller. No. Just more beautiful. Elsa grinned. Thank you. Then she looked out at the crowded ballroom. So this is what a party looks like. Anna nodded. It's warmer than I thought. All the people, I guess, Elsa said. And what is that amazing smell? Both of them caught a whiff of a sweet aroma wafting across the room. Chocolate, they exclaimed at the same time. Then they looked at each other and started laughing. Anna could hardly believe that Elsa was treating her so kindly. She was about to say more to her sister, but just then, a guest stepped up to be presented to the new queen and the princess. The Duke of Weaseltown, a royal attendant, announced. Weselton, the Duke corrected him. Then he bowed his head. As your closest partner in trade, it seems only fitting that I offer you your first dance as queen. Elsa stiffened and clasped her gloved hands together. Thank you, she said. But I don't dance. The duke looked offended, so Elsa quickly nudged Anna forward. But my sister is a marvelous dancer. Anna was a little startled, but she allowed the duke to lead her to the dance floor. Unfortunately, the duke was a horrible dancer. He couldn't seem to take one step without crushing Anna's toes. As he bobbed up and down, his toupee bounced back and forth on his head, and he never stopped talking. Bumpy Dumpa. Look at me, he crowed. This certainly makes up for being shut out for twelve years for no reason. Do you know the reason? he asked Anna. No? Well, watch this, like a chicken with the face of a monkey, I fly. Anna cringed as the duke danced around her like a dying peacock. Then she caught sight of Elsa watching from the side of the room, barely able to keep from laughing. Anna shot Elsa a number of help-me looks, but there was no way out of it. She was forced to finish the dance, much to Elsa's amusement. After the dance, Anna limped back to Elsa. Well, he was sprightly, said the queen with a smile. Especially for a man in heels. Anna replied. Both sisters giggled. Are you all right? 
Elsa asked more gently. Anna smiled. I've never been better, she said, glancing into Elsa's eyes. This is so nice. I wish it could be like this all the time. Me too, Elsa said wistfully. Then she caught herself and stiffened. But it can't. Why not? Anna asked, surprised at Elsa's sudden change of attitude. Elsa tensed. Because it can't, she said firmly. Anna's felt all her old disappointment rushing back. Excuse me, she said. Elsa watched sadly as Anna walked away. Chapter 7 Anna pushed through the crowd of guests, and one of the dancers tripped into her, knocking her backward. Someone grabbed her by the arms before she hit the floor. Glad I caught you, Hans said, smiling. Hans, she said, surprised. Hans lifted Anna back to her feet, and the two immediately were drawn into the dance. Hans was an excellent dancer, and Anna was happy to let him guide her around the ballroom, twirling her at just the right moments. She was amazed at how natural it felt. After that, she and Hans walked and laughed and danced some more. One hour turned into many hours of them talking and enjoying each other's company. Finally, they took a break and strolled into the rose garden. Hans plucked a rose and placed it in Anna's hair. As he did, he noticed the white streak running down the side of her head. What's this? Anna put her hand to her hair. I was born with it, she told him. Although I dreamt I was kissed by a troll. I like it, Hans said. On the balcony, they sat on a bench and Anna taught Hans how to eat a crumb cake. Just bite it. The whole thing, she said. The pair laughed as the treat crumbled all over Hans's face. Hans told Anna about his family. I have twelve older brothers, he said. Three of them pretended I was invisible for two years. That's horrible, Anna said. It's what brothers do, he replied with a shrug. Anna smiled knowingly. And sisters, she added. Elsa and I were really close when we were little. But then one day she just shut me out, and I never knew why. I would never shut you out, Hans said, gazing into Anna's eyes. Anna beamed. Okay, can I just say something crazy? she asked. I love crazy, Hans said with a wide grin. All my life has been a series of doors in my face, she said. Then suddenly, I bump into you. Anna explained that she felt like she'd been waiting her whole life to meet him. And Hans agreed. He felt the same way. Anna couldn't believe her good fortune. At last, here was someone who understood her. Someone who was open to new experiences and people, exactly the way she was. Hans was sweet, kind, and fun. They spent the rest of the party together, dancing, laughing, and discussing their pasts, and their futures, too. Can I say something crazy? Hans asked suddenly. Will you marry me? Anna gasped. Can I just, ooh? I mean, yes. She was amazed that she and Hans had found each other. She just knew that they were meant to be. Elsa. Anna called from across the ballroom. She pulled Hans toward her sister. May I present Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, she said formally. Your Majesty. Hans greeted the Queen with a deep bow. Anna was beaming. We would like your blessing, Hans continued. Of our marriage. Anna finished breathlessly. Marriage? Elsa asked. I'm confused. Well, we haven't worked out all the details, Anna said. We'll need a few days to plan the ceremony. 
Of course, we'll have soup, roast, and ice cream. Anna turned to Hans. Would we live here? Here? Elsa asked. Absolutely. Hans cried. What? No, Elsa said. And we'll invite all twelve of your brothers to stay here with us. And Anna stopped as Elsa put up her hand. Wait, she said. Slow down. Anna, no one's brothers are staying here. No one is getting married. Anna's mouth dropped open. Wait, what? I need to talk to you, Elsa said sternly. Alone. Anna linked her arm with Hansa's. No, she said. Whatever you have to say, you can say to both of us. Elsa shook her head. No. You can't marry a man you just met. Standing straighter, Anna spoke up. You can if it's true love. What do you know about true love? Elsa replied, scoffing at her sister's naivete. More than you, Anna replied. All you want is to be alone. Elsa took a deep breath. You asked for my blessing, but my answer is no. Now, if you'll excuse me, she said, and started to move away. Your Majesty, Hans said. If I may, no, you may not, Elsa snapped. And I think you should go. She walked off and signaled to one of the guards. The party is over. It's time to close the gates. Anna ran after her. Elsa. No. She reached for her sister and grabbed her hand. As she tugged at her to stay, Elsa's glove slipped off. Give me my glove. Elsa exclaimed. Anna held the glove up and away from Elsa. No, listen to me, she said. I can't live like this anymore. Elsa fought to gain control. Then leave, she finally said. She saw the hurt on Anna's face. She turned to flee from the room. What did I ever do to you? Anna cried. Enough, Anna. Elsa ordered. Why do you shut me out? Anna asked. Why do you shut the world out? What are you so afraid of? I said enough. Elsa shouted, spinning around. As she did, ice shot from her bare hand, coating the floor of the ballroom and frothing up into icy plumes. The music stopped abruptly and everyone turned to stare at Elsa in shock. She stared at her subjects, wishing with all her heart that she could take the magic back. But it was too late. Sheets of ice covered the dance floor. The great hall fell into a chilly silence. The duke gasped. Sorcery. I knew there was something going on here. Elsa? Anna called, but Elsa was already pushing through the doors and racing out of the room. Chapter 8 Elsa burst into the courtyard. She was so afraid now that her secret was out. She hoped she hadn't hurt anyone. Regardless, everyone in Arendelle would soon know about her magic. There she is, cried a townswoman, excited to get a glimpse of the newly crowned queen. The woman obviously had no idea what had just happened in the ballroom. Your Majesty. Long live the queen. Queen Elsa. Elsa backed away from the woman and quickly weaved through the crowd, trying hard not to touch anyone as she backed away. She didn't want to cause any harm with her powers. She just wanted to leave the kingdom and hide. A young woman with a small child in her arms called to her. Your Majesty, are you all right? she asked, full of concern. Elsa put her hands behind her and moved away. She slowly walked backward, accidentally bumping into the fountain in the center of the courtyard. As soon as she touched the fountain, the water in it froze to solid ice. There was a loud gasp from the villagers. 
people turned and ran away from Elsa. The duke and his guards ran down the castle steps. There she is, he shouted, leading the charge toward Elsa. Get her. Just stay away from me. Stay away. Elsa cried. She held her hands up, causing the castle steps to ice over. The duke's guards slipped and tumbled down to the ground. Monster, the duke hissed. The crowd panicked. A swirl of cold air traveled through Arendelle as Elsa ran along the streets, leaving ice and snow in her wake. Anna watched from the castle gates. Elsa, she called. Wait, please. She rushed from the castle and ran after Elsa. Hans trailed behind her. Elsa! Anna cried desperately. Elsa looked over her shoulder as she neared the water. When she turned, her foot touched the lapping waves, and the water in the fjord immediately froze. She took another cautious step, and another sheet of ice bloomed under her foot. Elsa! Anna called after her. Feeling her panic grow, Elsa ran across the fjord. With each step, more water froze underneath her. Soon she was moving at full speed, heading toward the mountains on the other side of the lake. As she passed, the ships belonging to the visiting dignitaries creaked and locked into place, frozen in the ice. The gorgeous summer day had turned into a growing winter storm. Elsa, stop. Anna pleaded. She rushed onto the fjord after her sister but slipped on the ice. She was too far behind to catch up. Hans reached out for Anna and helped her to stand. Anna, are you all right? he asked. They both watched as Elsa reached the far shore and made her way into the mountains. Anna strained to see the path Elsa had taken. Did you know? Hans asked Anna. No, Anna replied. Then she nodded. But it makes so much sense. They walked back through the village and overheard the duke speaking. He was addressing a growing crowd of concerned people. The queen has cursed this land, he said. She must be stopped. You must go after her. Anna rushed over to him. No, she shouted. No one is to go anywhere. You. The duke shook a finger at Anna. Is there sorcery in you, too? He shouted. Are you a monster, too? No, I'm completely ordinary, Anna replied. Hans took her hand. That's right, she is, he told the duke. And my sister is not a monster, Anna added. The duke scowled. She nearly killed me, he said dramatically. You slipped on ice, Hans pointed out. Anna stepped forward. It was an accident. She was scared. She didn't mean it. She didn't mean any of this. She paused. All she's ever wanted is to be perfect and good. Tonight was my fault. I pushed her. So I'm the one who needs to go after her. Anna turned to her royal guards. Bring me my horse, please. What? Anna, no. Hans shouted. It's too dangerous. I'm not afraid of Elsa, Anna said. I'll bring her back and make this right. A royal guard brought Anna's horse to her. She took her cloak, which was hanging over the saddle, and wrapped it around her shoulders. I'm coming with you, Hans said. No, Anna told him. I need you here to take care of Arendelle. Hans saw the desperation in Anna's eyes. He put his hand to his chest. On my honor, he said, bowing his head. I leave Prince Hans in charge. Anna told the crowd. Are you sure you can trust her? Hans asked as Anna mounted the horse. When Anna didn't reply, he leaned in. I don't want you getting hurt. 
She's my sister, Anna said. She'd never hurt me. Urging her horse into a gallop, Anna took off over the frozen fjord toward the mountains as snow continued to fall. Elsa trudged up the steep north mountain. Ever since she was a child, she had been taught to conceal her powers. Now that was all over. She felt sad and worried as she gazed back at Arendelle far below. She knew no one in Arendelle would ever see her in the same way again. But a tiny part of her also felt relieved. Her magic had been a hard secret to keep, and she didn't have to hide it anymore. Being alone was easier, too. She didn't have to worry about hurting anyone. As she continued up the mountain, her steps actually became a little lighter. Now that everyone knew what she was capable of, she was free to be herself. With a wave of her hand, Elsa started to experiment with her magic. Snow and ice whirled around her as she created snowmen and icy patterns in the air. The farther she got from Arendelle, the more confident she felt. As she took each step, her ability to draw forth ice and cold grew stronger and more powerful. Elsa plucked off her crown and threw it aside. She tossed her head and her tightly bound hair came loose, cascading over one shoulder in a thick, wavy braid. Twirling around, she conjured up a flowing new outfit of ice, a crystal blue gown with a cape of gossamer frost. Snow was her element. She was the Snow Queen. Thrilled to let her powers loose at last, Elsa found that she could do more than she realized. As released her magic, a staircase of ice extended upward to an exquisite ice palace that grew as she raised her arms. This was where she would live. When the castle was finished, Elsa slammed the door. She was home at last. Chapter 9 The wind howled and the snow blew into Anna's face. She struggled to guide her horse up the frozen mountain path. She was determined to find Elsa. Anna was sure her sister would thaw the fjord and bring back summer. The whole kingdom would celebrate, and the two sisters would live happily ever after. The thought encouraged Anna as she rode through the snowdrifts. Elsa! Anna called into the blizzard. It's me, Anna. Your sister who didn't mean to make you freeze the summer. She paused, shivering in the cold. Wow, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Anyway, I'm sorry. This is all my FFF fault. A wolf's howl interrupted Anna's cries. Her horse stopped and looked around nervously. Anna tried to convince herself that the sounds were just puppies playing. Of course, none of this would have happened if she'd just told me her secret, Anna said with a sigh. A tree branch snapped, and the horse panicked. It whinnied and kicked up its front legs. Whoa, whoa! Anna commanded, pulling back on the reins. She flew off the horse into a snowdrift. She sat up, spit snow out of her mouth, and looked around just in time to see her horse running away. No, no, no! Come back! Anna called, but the horse was long gone. Okay, she said to herself. She had to keep focused. She struggled to stand up and dusted the snow off her dress. Snow, it had to be snow, she grumbled. She couldn't have had a tropical magic that covered the fjords in white sand and warm. A welcome sight interrupted Anna's rant. She saw smoke rising in the distance. Fire! Anna took one more step and stumbled down a steep hill. She began to roll like a snowball, layering on more and more snow as she went. Anna landed with a splash in an icy stream and the snowball broke apart. She got to her feet, shivering. Cold, 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 she muttered. 
She was standing next to a small building. A wooden sign hung in front of her, wandering Oaken's trading post. A lump of snow fell off the sign. And Sauna, she said, reading the end of the sign. Anna hurried inside. The little shop was stocked with summer supplies. After all, it was technically still summertime. She gazed at the goods, looking for warm clothes. Who, who, called a blonde man behind the counter wearing a bright sweater. His name was Oaken, and he was the owner. Big summer blowout, he said hopefully. Half off on our swimming suits, clogs, and a sun bomb of my own invention, Ja. Oh, great, Anna said, looking around the store. For now, how about boots? Winter boots and dresses? Well, that would be in our winter department, the man said in a thick accent. Anna darted toward the single rack of warm clothing. Oh, um, I was just wondering, she said, trying to sound casual, has another young woman, the queen, perhaps, I don't know, passed through here? She brought a pair of boots and some clothes to the counter and set them in front of Oaken. Only one crazy enough to be out in the storm is you, dear, Oaken said in a pleasant voice. At that moment, the front door opened and a gust of frigid air blew in. A large, broad man entered. He was dressed for the Arctic cold and completely covered in snow, with only his brown eyes showing. It was Kristoff, and he was looking for supplies, too. You and this fellow... Who, who, Oaken sang out. Big summer blowout. Kristoff pushed past Oaken and went straight to Anna. Carrots, he demanded. Huh? Anna asked. Behind you, Kristoff said crossly, pointing. Oh, right, Anna said. Excuse me. She moved out of the way, and Kristoff grabbed a bag of carrots from a shelf behind her. He gathered a few other supplies as he moved briskly around the shop. A real howler in July, Ja? Oaken said, trying to make conversation with the stranger. Wherever could it be coming from? The North Mountain, Kristoff replied. The North Mountain, Anna repeated to herself. Was that where Elsa had gone? Chapter 10 Kristoff brought his pile of supplies to the front counter. That'll be forty, Ja? Oaken said. Forty? Kristoff barked. No, ten. No, see, these are from our winter stock, Oaken told him. Where supply and demand have a big problem. You want to talk about a supply and demand problem? Kristoff asked. I sell ice for a living. Anna walked over to the counter and smiled at Kristoff. Ice really? she said. That's a rough business to be in right now. Forty, Oaken repeated. But I will throw in a visit to Oaken's sauna. Who, who? Kristoff and Anna both peered over Oaken's shoulder to see a family waving from a toasty sauna in a room behind him. Ten's all I got, Kristoff told him. Help me out, Ja. Oaken held up the bag of carrots. Ten will get you this and no more. Kristoff glared at Oaken, seething. Just tell me one thing, Anna said, moving closer to Kristoff. What was happening on the North Mountain? Did it seem magical? Kristoff pulled down his scarf, revealing his face. He looked down sharply at Anna. Yes, he shouted. Now back up while I deal with this crook here. Oaken rose from his chair. He did not appreciate being called a crook. What did you call me, he said. He was much taller and wider than Kristoff had expected. Oaken loomed over the counter. Then, with a frown, Oaken swiftly threw Kristoff out of the shop. 
Kristoff went flying out the door and landed face first in a mound of snow next to Sven, who had been waiting patiently outside. Kristoff pulled his head out of the snow. Ow, he moaned. Goodbye. Oaken said pleasantly and slammed the door. The reindeer snorted and moved over to Kristoff, snuffling and searching in the snow. No, Sven, Kristoff told him. I didn't get your carrots. The hungry reindeer huffed in his face. Then Kristoff turned his head and spotted something that made him brighten. There was a barn behind the trading post, a warm place to spend the night. But I did find us a place to sleep, he added. And it's free. Back in the shop, Oaken returned to his other customer. I'm sorry about this violence, he told Anna. I will add a quart of lutefisk so we have good feelings. He looked over at what she had selected. Just the outfit and the boots, Ja? Anna looked at her supplies and then over at the bag Kristoff had left on the counter. She smiled as an idea occurred to her. Shortly afterward, Anna left Oaken's shop and looked around. She could hear singing coming from the barn. She pushed open the door quietly and peered inside. Kristoff was lying against a bale of hay, playing his lute. He was singing to his reindeer, and then, singing as Sven, he finished the song from the reindeer's point of view. Ahem. Anna cleared her throat. When Kristoff looked over, she smiled. Nice duet, she said. Oh, it's just you, he said when he saw Anna standing in front of him. What do you want? I want you to take me up the North Mountain, she declared. I don't take people places, Kristoff replied. He closed his eyes and lay back in the hay. Let me rephrase that, Anna said. She threw the sack of supplies she had just bought over to Kristoff. They were exactly the items he'd wanted. Umph, he grunted as the heavy bag landed on his chest. Take me up the North Mountain, she ordered. Kristoff regarded her carefully. He was not used to taking orders. And he especially couldn't see any reason to follow Anna's. Look, Anna said. I know how to stop this winter. Kristoff hesitated. If the cold weather stopped, he might be able to sell his ice down in Arendelle again. We leave at dawn, he said finally. And you forgot the carrots for Sven. Anna dropped a bag of carrots on Kristoff's face. Ooh, he said. Oops, sorry, sorry, Anna said. Then she caught herself. She was trying to take charge, after all. We leave now, she declared. Right now. Kristoff looked over at Sven and offered him a carrot. Sven took a healthy bite. So did Kristoff. They looked at the stranger before them as they chewed. They both knew she had no clue what was ahead. Chapter 11 Kristoff held the reins tightly, steering Sven and the sled through the thick, heavy snow. The night sky was cloudy with the promise of still more snow. Hang on. Kristoff yelled to his passenger. We like to go fast. Sven responded happily and charged forward through the drifts. I like fast, Anna answered. She leaned back and put her feet up on the front of the sled to show that she was not bothered by the high speed. Get your feet down, Kristoff scoffed. This is fresh lacquer. He glanced at her sideways. Seriously, were you raised in a barn? He leaned over and wiped down his new sled. No, I was raised in a castle, Anna replied. So tell me, Kristoff said, what made the queen go all ice crazy? It was all my fault, Anna blurted out. I got engaged and she freaked out because I'd only just met him, you know, that day. And she said she wouldn't bless the marriage. 
Wait, Kristoff said. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yeah, anyway, Anna replied, dismissing his comment. I got mad and yelled at her, and she tried to walk away, but I grabbed her glove, then, wait. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? Kristoff repeated. Yes, are you listening? Anna snapped. Thing is, she wore the gloves all the time, but I just thought the girls got a thing about dirt. Didn't your parents ever warn you about strangers? Kristoff asked. Yes, they did, Anna said. She looked Kristoff over carefully and slid farther away from him on the seat. After all, he was a stranger. But Hans is not a stranger. Kristoff raised his eyebrows. Oh, yeah? What's his last name? Anna frowned, thinking. Of the Southern Isles, she offered. What's his favorite food? Kristoff fired off. Anna hesitated. Sandwiches. Best friend's name? Kristoff quickly followed up. Probably John, Anna replied, reflecting that lots of people were named John. So maybe Hans's best friend would be, too. I color. Kristoff pressed. Dreamy. Anna smiled. Have you had a meal with him yet? Kristoff asked. What if you hate the way he eats? What if you hate the way he picks his nose? Anna wrinkled her forehead. Picks his nose? And eats it, Kristoff added. Excuse me, sir, Anna said. He is a prince. Kristoff shook his head. All men do it. You. Anna made a face. Look, it doesn't matter. It's true love. Doesn't sound like true love, Kristoff said, staring straight ahead. Are you some sort of love expert? Anna asked. No, but I have friends who are, he responded. You have friends who are love experts? Anna asked sarcastically. Kristoff's eyes widened and he stopped the sled. Stop talking, he demanded. No, I want to meet these friends, she insisted with a grin. Kristoff put his hand over Anna's mouth. I mean it. <laughs> he stood up and looked into the dark woods. He held up a lantern. Suddenly, he yelled, Sven. Go! Go! The sled took off and Anna fell backward. She saw glowing eyes in the darkness all around them. What are they? she whispered. Wolves, Kristoff said. What do we do? Anna asked. She looked at Kristoff and readied herself. I've got this, Kristoff said calmly. You just don't fall off and don't get eaten. But I want to help, Anna said. No, Kristoff replied. Why not? Anna pouted. Because I don't trust your judgment, Kristoff said. Anna was offended. Excuse me? A wolf jumped at the sleigh, and Kristoff kicked it back. Who marries a man she's just met? Anna was seething. It's true love. She picked up Kristoff's lute and swung it at his head. He ducked and Anna struck a wolf that was about to lunge onto the sled. Whoa! Kristoff exclaimed, just as another wolf jumped up and knocked him down. He fell out and was dragged behind the sled. Christopher! Anna cried. It's Kristoff, he yelled. Anna took the lantern and lit the sled's blanket on fire. She threw the flaming blanket toward Kristoff, and the wolves tumbled off him. Then she reached out and pulled him back onto the sled. Kristoff looked at her in dismay. You almost set me on fire, he said. But I didn't, Anna replied. Sven suddenly whinnied. Ahead of him was a steep drop into a massive gorge. 
Get ready to jump, Sven. Anna called. You don't tell him what to do. Kristoff shouted. I do. In one swift movement, he grabbed Anna and threw her onto Sven's back. Then he unhooked the reindeer's harness. Jump! Sven leaped and cleared the gorge with Anna on his back. Just behind them, Kristoff boldly jumped with the sled. The sled didn't make it all the way across, but just before it fell into the gorge, Kristoff threw himself off and caught the edge of the cliff on the other side. Down below, his new sled burst into flames as he dangled from the cliff. I just got it. He looked down with a sigh. Then his hand started to slip on the slick ice. Oh, he said in alarm. No, no, no. Out of nowhere, an axe slammed into the snow just inches from his face. He heard Anna's voice from above. Grab on, she yelled. The axe was attached to a rope that was secured around Sven. Pull, Sven. Anna ordered. Sven heaved and walked backward, lifting Kristoff to safety. Anna and Kristoff peered over the edge at the burning sled. I'll replace your sled and everything in it, she promised. She looked sadly at Kristoff. And I understand if you don't want to help me anymore. Kristoff watched as Anna walked away. Sven nuzzled him softly with his cold nose. Of course I don't want to help her anymore, he told the reindeer. In fact, this whole thing has ruined me for helping anyone ever again. He watched as Anna turned and started to walk in the opposite direction. But she'll die on her own, he said, speaking in Sven's deep voice. Kristoff looked away. I can live with that, he said. Anna turned this way and that, unsure which way to go. But you won't get your new sled if she's dead, Kristoff continued in Sven's voice. He sighed. Wait up, he called to Anna in his normal voice. We're coming. Anna grinned. You are, she said happily. Then she composed herself. I mean, sure, I'll let you tag along. Anna wasn't sure what lay ahead, but she was very glad that Kristoff and Sven were coming with her.